In 1905, the Chemin de Fer du Nord of France were in need of some new engines to haul heavy coal trains, which at the time had to be double-headed. Naturally, engineer Gaston Dubousquet felt that an articulated locomotive design would do the job. However, most articulated designs at the time had their drawbacks. Malay designs didn't quite have the articulation he desired, Maya designs may or may not have had issues with their fireboxes, and Fairleys were proving to be fairly problematic. As such, Bousquet took it upon himself to design his own unique engines. Introducing the Du Bousquet locomotives. First built in 1905, these engines used a similar wheel arrangement to Maya type designs, having two articulated bogies mounted under the boiler with the cylinders centered towards the middle of the frame. Each bogey had six driving wheels powered by two cylinders, making for 12 driving wheels in total. As the cylinders were so close together, it allowed the front set to connect to the rear set, with the rear set being powered using high pressure steam, which then then flowed to the front set, which were designed to operate using lower pressure steam. A gap was left in the middle of the locomotive's water tanks to allow easier access to the cylinders for maintenance, and the unpowered wheels helped support the cylinder's weight. The main difference between the Bousquets and typical Maya designs was its rear bogey. Most Mayas tended to use more rounded, spherical joints on both bogies, which did allow for better articulation, but the complexity of the joints required complex, flexible pipes to connect the boiler to the cylinders, which were prone to leaking. Bousquet's design, on the other hand, used rear bogies that only rotated left and right, making it much easier to design joints to pipe steam from the boiler, with the front bogie still using a more rounded joint to provide extra flexibility. 48 of these engines were built between 1905 and 1910 for the Chemin de Fer du Nord, and put to work pulling heavy coal trains along the steep gradients of the lines of northern France. Not only were they capable capable of moving the loads, but were also able to do it at speeds of nearly 60 kilometers an hour. Seeing their success, the East Railway built an additional 13 for themselves, between 1910 and 1911 for goods work. By 1921, however, it was decided the engines were better suited elsewhere, and 34 of the Nors engines, along with all 13 of the Easts, were moved to the Grand Ceinture line to move freight around Paris. An additional 38 Bousquets were built to help, these being upgraded versions of the previous designs as well as being fitted with superheaters. All of them worked around Paris until 1934, when the decline in railway traffic made them surplus. Some ended up going back to the Nord before all of them fell under national ownership in 1938, continuing to work as goods engines around Paris and the north of France. France wasn't the only place these engines operated, as 12 engines were recorded being built by various companies in Belgium for work in China on the peking Hankow Railway. How these engines performed and how long they operated for isn't known. 10 were built for broad gauge in Spain in 1912, working between Cordova and Belmiz. These engines were said to have suffered much wear working on the gradients of the line, and because of their overall poor water capacity, had to tow a wagon fitted with a wooden water tank to keep their boilers filled. Despite this, they worked until 1947, before finally being withdrawn. The French Bousquet engines also had a decent working life, with most of them surviving until the 1940s. However, with the introduction of more powerful, conventionally designed locomotives, the Bousquets ended up being less powerful and more complicated to maintain than modern alternatives, and so by 1950, most of them had been withdrawn, with the last one being withdrawn and scrapped in 19. 1952. Sadly, none were preserved. Gaston Dubousquet did design many other successful locomotives for use on French railways, but out of all of his designs, his name is mostly attributed to this one. Just goes to show that sometimes, the work you'll be remembered for isn't always your best, sometimes it's your most unique. Subscribe for more.